Our guest today is Dr. Michelle Slimko, who's Senior Vice President, Nutrition and Environmental Research at Dairy Management Inc., DMI, the checkoff organization. Uh, I became acquainted with Michelle when we both appeared on a panel organized by the Venture Fuel folks who've done some fascinating dairy things, which we'll talk about another day. But uh, the topic was uh, the emphasis for today's consumers on functional foods. And I found Dr. Slimko's uh, uh, information very interesting, and I'm happy that she's going to share it with us today. Michelle, welcome to Dairy Business Update. Uh, thank you so much for that warm welcome. I, I really appreciate uh, meeting you. I, I hope one of these days we get to meet in person. Well, um, I know that's a common phrase these days, but I'm going to look forward to that. Well, it's happening more and more. So <laughs> yeah. where, there's, uh, where there's life, there's hope indeed. Yes. Uh, well, why don't we begin by having you kind of talk about uh, functional foods? What, what does that mean to today's consumer? And, uh, and, and what's dairy's role uh, in that whole category? Sure. Um, thanks for that question. This is a common question that continues to bubble up. And I think more than ever, consumers care about their wellness. And it goes beyond the absence of disease, but also thinking about their holistic health. And what we're finding in consumer data and also in working with consumers, they're including in their definition mind, body, and spirit. And they're looking for the solutions through the functional foods to meet these needs. Um, and first, let's talk about the, defi uh, if, you know, the definition of functional foods. Today, um, FDA doesn't have a current definition for functional foods, but they do regulate what is on pack for functional foods. Um, in a sense, most foods, are that most foods that are recommended by the dietary guidelines for Americans can be considered functional foods, since the accepted definition is that they provide health benefits beyond nutrition. And that's exactly what the dietary guidelines state um, about following the healthy eating patterns. And the good news here is that dairy is included in all those healthy eating patterns. And there's consistent evidence um, that demonstrates that these healthy dietary eating patterns are associated with beneficial outcomes, um, such as all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, um, overweight and obesity, as well as bone health and some related cancer. So thinking about the foods that have been examined by the Scientific Committee of the Dietary Guidelines, I'd say most of the foods that are recommended in there um, are functional foods. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, how we relate to consumers. There's so much information, and I guess we have to say misinformation. Uh, how do we communicate uh, properly uh, and accurately uh, the, the benefits that particularly dairy foods can have for consumers? Uh, yeah, I think that's a really important question. Uh, sometimes I think about how much we multitask throughout the day. I live in a household um, of all boys from various ranges from 16 to 25 and seeing them on their smartphone to their video to their Netflix, looking at how information is distilled and, and touching all the senses um, in this world compared to when I grew up, they're learning science and diets and trends through dances and songs and print. Um, but I'd say my advice to really sift through that is to remain uh, nutrition science as a compass to kind of drive through that noise. Um, and, you know, a couple of things I would think about just as a, as a dietitian too, to think about what's important really to your health and wellness goals and be really clear about that, either if it's self-defined or working with your um, healthcare team and thinking about, um, you know, how you want to set, set those goals out for yourself. And, and a couple of things, just a reminders, you know, not one size fits all. It's important for flexibility and not to be too rigid in some of these diets and trends that we see um, online or, you know, in all these different media. And it's important to eat a variety of foods from the different food groups that are, you know, have nutrient rich options and most mindful of total calories, sugar, saturated fat and sodium. And if we're thinking about mind, body and spirit, the importance of also inclusion of, of physical daily activity. I uh, happened to be on Twitter the other day and noticed a posting from a nutritionist and her, her post went like this and you might be able to relate, but it, it has to do with how consumers get their information. Uh, this nutritionist said, being a dietitian is weird because half of my family treats me like a medical doctor and the other half views my education as no better than a haphazard Google search they'll listen to instead of me anyway. 
I can relate to that, but I think it's important. The dietitians are a key to a lot of, you know, information too. So and not to forget uh, their training and their knowledge of food too, to kind of help sift through some of that noise. I, I think that's funny. I can relate to that too. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really struck my uh, eye as I was preparing for this conversation. Um, talk a little bit about some of the research areas, uh, particularly how we are trying to reach the Zen Z, Gen Z uh, uh, folks, uh, young people, uh, and, and what their emerging expectations for, for food are. Yeah, you know, I think what's exciting in the role that I'm playing now is that dairy farmer funded research, not only to support the dietary guidelines and looking at public health and chronic disease, but also looking at these emerging areas that are connecting with the consumer. And like I just mentioned, their connection beyond just nutrition and calories connecting to mind, body, and spirit, we're also exploring other areas uh, that they're looking for that are important. And just as a top line, um, some of those areas, you know, also are building on already existing um, evidence and then looking at how best to position, if not explore more and look at further evidence. And some of those areas that we're seeing Gen Z that are important to them are areas like energy. It's very popular consumer benefit. And we know that milk, cheese and yogurt throughout the day um, and also being a good source of high quality protein is important. So energy is another uh, one they're looking for as a solution. Um, strength, healthy muscles and strong bones. Uh, we also look at the nutrition that dairy foods can provide from protein, calcium, vitamin D, and many other nutrients. Um, and focus is another one that's emerging. Um, what, there's, there's some areas of research that we are looking into and our current call for proposals for National Dairy Council are actually seeking other proposals from scientists looking at dairy and mental health. So it'll be exciting to kind of see where that research evolves. Um, but right now, it seems like common sense and holistic approach, looking at sleep, stress reduction, anxiety redu reduction, good diet, and physical activity are very important there. Um, a couple areas, too, related uh, that are important in today's um, context, I think, with the pandemic is also immunity. I read a data from um, the Hartman uh, study that looked at 51% of consumers are including immunity as part of their definition of health and wellness. Um, and we know that dairy can play a, uh, an important part for immune function in terms of their uh, contribution of vitamin A, D, protein, zinc, uh, selenium. And uh, we also are, are looking at other inherent components of milk to explore other areas that uh, dairy can provide health benefits to, uh, related to immunity. It's gonna be an important area for the future. Um, and lastly, digestive health. I think this is another connection for Gen Z, um, digestive health and wellness and looking at um, eat, you know, how eating fermented foods with live and active cultures is important to gut health. And we know um, products like yogurt with cultures, hard cheeses, and kefir can benefit gut health. So those are kind of a, a snapshot of some of the areas that we continue to explore at National Dairy Council, along with the important areas um, that are critical for dietary guidelines research. As we wrap up here, <clears throat> just give us your perspective uh, as a member of the DMI uh, key staff, uh, what the value is for farmers and for consumers of this industry-led research on the environment and, and, and particularly nutrition as we're speaking about today. Sure, thank you. Um, you know, it's such a pleasure to work with and on behalf of U.S. dairy farmers, and I'm so proud to represent their, their science. And their checkoff investments in research allows us and our, their scientists at National Dairy Council to do their job. Um, their leadership, their input, and in my case, I didn't grow up on a dairy farm, but that's what I love about coming to work every day, learning something about dairy farming, and that input from the, directly from the dairy farm going into our research investments in both environmental and nutrition. Um, and what I want to, uh, you know, just kind of emphasize sitting in the seat that I am looking at both areas of research. Uh, we conducted a life cycle assessment to get a baseline of U.S. dairy's contributions to greenhouse gas. And that was an estimated 2%. Um, it gave us a benchmark to continuously uh, work to improve upon. And it goes beyond, beyond greenhouse gases to best practices to care for natural resources like water and soil, and also using innovation to generate newer, greener sources of energy like biofuel. And that's where our sustainability goals and our net zero efforts come into play. But the powerhouse part of this story is then you include that and take a century long legacy 
in human nutrition and health that NDC research has led and is known for, and combine that with the more recent two decades of focus on environmental research and IC-led innova innovation, you get a whole mo more holistic experience to share with today's consumer. And that's what they're seeking, foods that are good for them and help them achieve their benefits and what they want, and that also come from a good place, be a good people and the business to um, business folks advancing public health. Um, and we also know dairy has an unmatched and unique nutrient package that's hard to replace and re re produce responsibly with care for animals and the planet, helping people across the lifespan with better health and wellness without compromise. So overall, I'd say the benefit of a dairy farmer investment in research continues to be that dairy is grounded in good science. And that's thanks to Chekhov. Enables us to really tell this story um, that dairy is grounded, uh, that's good for people, planet, and the community. Well, Dr. Michelle Slimko, we appreciate you joining us on Dairy Business Update today. And uh, thank you for sharing this information with us. Dr. Michelle Slimko is Senior Vice President, Nutrition and Environmental Research at DMI. Thanks for being with us. This is your host, Joel Hastings at Dairy Business Update, found on dairybusiness.com.